again, like life is too short to sit around and wait for things to happen. Welcome to the Passion Behind the Art Show. It's all about diving in with individuals to learn the story behind their passion. It's your host, Daryl Pena. What's up? Guess what? It's another week, another amazing guest, and another opportunity for me to bring you value through someone else's story. But before we jump into this week's episode, I just want to let you know that our Patreon page is up and running, finally. And if you're not familiar with Patreon, it's basically a way to support a specific endeavor that you're interested in. And of course, the endeavor that we're talking about right now is Passion Behind the Art, the podcast. So I'd really appreciate it if you would support the podcast through our Patreon page. All you need to do is just go to passionbehindart.com and look for the Patreon tab and it will take you directly to the page. This would mean the world to me and everything that I'm doing in regards to the podcast. A large percentage of what I do in regards to the podcast. As a matter of fact, all of it is free. And I would really appreciate you if you could just help support the podcast with as low as $2. Nothing too crazy. $2. And of course, there's various tiers you can support with more. And the more you support, the more incentives you get. So just go to passionbandart.com and check out the, our Patreon page. This would help me out a lot. There will also be a link in the show notes. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. Welcome to a live episode of the Passion Band Art Show with my good friend, Alicia Cologne. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so Alicia, um... We haven't really done anything like this since you've jumped off and went and did your it's own true. thing, your own thing. I know we've had behind the scenes conversation, but nothing in the public. So let's yeah. um, let's just do a quick test of your temperature. How are you doing? Like, how are you as now that you're doing your own thing? Like, how are you body feeling? How are you doing? Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, it's uh, been almost a year now since I've done the whole like jump ship and started my own freelance studio. Um, and that was really scary because like there are apparently like lulls in a freelance life where there's just people just expect not to get work. Uh, see, I didn't know any of that. I was just thinking like, okay, I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> Projects, you know? And so, um, good thing is that like I, I was very wise and, and had a lot of um, money kind of stashed away for savings. And that actually was an inheritance that like was very timely. It wasn't like we were good savers. It was just more of a like, okay, let's not, let's not put this on like <laughs> random things we don't necessarily need. Let's, let's save it. So we did that. And uh, there were months where we definitely had to dip into that. And in fact, it got to the point where like we only had $122 left of, of savings and um, and I told myself that as soon as we get down to where we only had a hundred dollars in savings, uh, I would go find a job. Thanks. And that literally was last month where, uh, I only had $122 left in savings, but as you know, as the world's aligned, I ended up getting three biggest projects that have ever gotten back to back to back. So meaning, um, like I say, like they literally are the three most biggest projects I got back to back to back. So now I'm currently drowning. So I went from like, oh gosh, <laughs> I'm going to go have to find a job literally last month to, oh no, I need somebody to help me run this business because now I don't know how I'm going to handle it. Okay. Um, so thankfully before that growth happened, I already had some like financial systems in place to figure out like how to funnel money in a very wise way mm -hmm. uh, to be a good steward of it. Um, so anyway, so like the, so I ended up getting a contractor. So now I have a contractor that's ongoing. That's not per project because I, before I would have contractors come on per project, but this one is my first ongoing one. And I made sure that she, like, I have enough money to like pay her already for like 
like two months. So it's like, okay, as long as I, like, I got to save that, you know what I mean? To make sure that, that I could pay my contractors, but that's where I'm at right now, where it's like, I'm, I'm getting these projects in or the projects keep changing or growing. Um, and I'm finding some contractors to help me with the idea that eventually I will be able to, uh, hire employees. So that's all sweet, sweet, it's sweet, exciting, sweet, but it's sweet, scary. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> All right, so let's rewind a little bit, almost to a year ago. Um, okay. You were a part of a amazing studio, right? Because mm-hmm. I know a couple of people that work there, including you, and you were a part of an amazing studio. Like, why did you want to go and do your own thing? Yeah, so I was part of uh, Focus Lab for six years, and I I loved. Uh, very much loved that agency, but it got to a point where we were growing in different directions. Mm. So, so you have that where it's like, okay, they're a very flat organization. They are changing it now. Um, But I got to a point in my career where I've been doing this now for about 15 years. I wanted to lead, lead my own team. I wanted to help mold and shape the next generation. So I wanted to do that professionally, but then I also had this like thing from a family perspective where I would end up spending all of my uh, emotional collateral at work. And so when I came home to like my three kids, I had absolutely no patience or perseverance or anything like that to to spend with the kids. Um, So I ended up just kind of realizing that, you know what? If I make this jump to freelance, I will obviously make less money and my stress levels will probably be very different. But I know that I think I know at that point, my emotional stamina for my kids will be increased. And that is actually 100 percent true. So whereas before it was like, you know, maybe they spilt their dinner and I'm like freaking out because I'm like, oh, it's more work. I just wanted to relax, you know, Uh, and now it's like all right, kids, well, this is how we clean it up, you know, and it completely is a night and day reaction. Um, wow. And, wow. And That's just, amazing. Yeah. So, so after thinking about that and fast forwarding now, you can actually see the effects of like going on your own and especially when it comes to you and you relating with your kids and the emotions. Exactly. Stuff. Exactly. So like one of them, I think a really great example is my, um, my middle daughter. So she has a little bit of a learning disability. And so she's a solid grade behind okay. uh, where kids generally are in her age. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with just me not being able to consistently mandate that she reads because what, what we're learning, cause she has like a mild form of dyslexia. So it's like, what we're learning is that like, if she learns how to read, that is going to absolutely catapult all the other things that she's struggling with. Like she's gotcha. going to understand math a lot better. Gotcha. Um, cause anyway, I don't want to get into the details, but like, that's just how it is. And so when I was tired, I, I, but you know, when I worked at the agency, I didn't have the emotional stamina to like say, okay, it's six o'clock, it's time to read and, and fight with her because she didn't want to, cause it was hard. Gotcha. Uh, I didn't know how to, uh, communicate growth mindset instead of fixed mindset because she very much like grew, like she, she has this thinking that like, well, it's hard for me. So it's always going to be hard for me. So why do I even need to do it? And it's like, that's mm. not, that's not how our brains work. It's not right. how they were made. Um, And so it's been really cool just to have that emotional stamina and be able to see her grow, uh, Mm. like to catch up with the rest of the kids in her, you know, in her grade is, is more rewarding than any project I could probably ever land, you know? So, um, just by hearing some of the stuff you're talking about, like, what's the biggest reason for going on your own was your family? I would say for me, it was my family, um, Mm. But it is very two pronged because it's like, again, you had the professional, you know, where it's like, I really wanted to have something that was my own. Right. But on the other hand, it's like, I really wanted something um, that would allow me to take care of my family the way they needed me to take care of them. Okay. And really at the, the juncture of it, because the reason why I want to create a studio is because I feel like work is redemptive, meaning I feel like it, it's through my art and through projects that I have became the best version of myself. 
Um, you know, I stand at the cusp of a project going like, can I do this? I don't know if I can do this. And like learning what self-talk was and learning how to positively talk about myself to myself, you know, and, and then believing those words and, and then trying and failing and learning that failure is okay. And just moving forward and all of that. Um, I am at such a healthier place than I've ever been in my whole life. And it's Mm. been through the creative field, you know, the creative battlefield, um, and so it's like, I want to create a studio that's healthy, that helps people like learn through that, to grow through that. But at the same time, I want a studio where it's like, I can also help that with my kids. You know what I mean? So really at the core, it's, I want people to be the best versions of themselves. And I think me doing this will help those in my close proximity to be the better versions of themselves. I love it. I love it. All right, so so let's fast forward again. You're 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 out on your own. Like, what were some of the things you did to say, "Hey, I'm here and I need work"? Or did you have like a few lined up the day you went out and did your thing? Yeah. Uh, so the biggest thing that I did was, I think when I when I worked at Focus Lab, I knew that I wasn't going to be forever. Uh, I also saw that Focus Lab had a pretty big platform, so uh, I thought it, it it would be pretty. Um, unwise of me to take advantage of that while I worked with them. And so I tried to continue to build up my own brand, not even knowing where I was going to go, if I was going to go anywhere at that point. It was just like, like I see an opportunity for me to get to know. Um, Thank you so much, Shay, for showing up. Yes. Love you, Shay. Um, Shay is awesome. So uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So what I did is that I really use that to really connect with people. Um, And and not just like connect with people like no names, but like mm-hmm. really get to know them as an individual, right? As relationships, like you and I, you know, it's like, like, I know your kids and know your backstory, you know, it's like, it's really important to me to, to know people. And so at that point, I continually shared stuff on Instagram and Twitter, but because I made the relationships of the people behind the avatars, when I started sharing, hey, I'm going out. I had people who wanted to rally around me, not just because of the work I did, but because of our relationship. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And so these people, um, they retweeted or they, they, they grabbed, you know, my work on dribble or like whatever it was. And then they were like, Hey, hire her, you know, like she would be great. And, or even had friends who, um, who said, Hey, let's collaborate Mm -hmm. because I, you know, like I create some really cool stuff. So maybe if we create cool stuff together and get more eyes on, you know, what you do Uh, and through all those collaborations and then those relationships that that had, that pretty much has brought projects on. Um, So no, I didn't have anything lined up, but I would say that just being a, you know, compassionate person and caring about who people are and like, and I think that was has been really helpful. That's awesome. That's awesome. So as you said, like I know that you got connected with um, Dan Petty. Uh, was that did you know? Did you guys know each other before you went full time, or was that something happened like during your on your well, own? Well, I would say so. Dan Petty and I knew of each other, mm-hmm. uh, and I think again that was that that focus lab connection where. Um, You know, I would just talk to a lot of people or, you know, Twitter, just being allowed on Twitter. And uh, so when the greater than avatars, like, so he he was thinking about doing this docuseries on people to kind of get to know like people on a a different level than avatars. Right. And um, he asked, he's like, hey, he like on Twitter, like, he's like, hey, does anybody know anybody in like the Southeast that like needs to be represented? And I was like, (laughs) And, uh, so, I mean, I literally, I I nominated myself. And then again, once I nominated myself, all these other people that follow us mutually were like, oh yeah, her, her. And so then at that juncture, um, that's how we ended up getting connected. And through that, we realized that we are very like-minded in many different ways. Um, you know, loving people and and just having an abundant mindset of like, no, we can lift people up and know that we're going to be taken care of through that. Like, oh, that's cool. 
that's cool well, that's cool yeah. so what is like each what's the what's a work day what's the hours like what's the what's the, what time do you start what's the what's a regular work day uh, okay your studio <sighs> oh my goodness so the i work nine to two nine to two thirty so i generally try to keep my hours within like 30 hours a week um again that kind of goes with the the rhyme and reason of school so it's like i am working while the kids are at school now we have the summer around so we have the nanny but i'm still trying to keep that those hours um and my my normal day is like i come in and it changes depending upon what phases i have so each project has like multiple phases right like everybody has that from a branding and ui that's like, the project manager and you coming out yeah 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 right <laughs> Yeah. So it's like, there's so many different phases. And so like, depending upon like what phases these projects are all in, you know, it depends upon what my day, but right now uh, I am sketching. I have three projects going on concurrently and they're all in the sketching phase. <sighs> um, and so pretty much what that means is that in the morning I check to see if there's any feedback uh, in, in Slack because my projects are long. I generally either enter their Slacks or they enter my Slack. Um <laughs> I enter into their slacks. That's not <laughs> odd to say at all. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so I go, I go into their, you know, oh, slack God. and figure out if there's any feedback, uh, schedule a meeting if I need to. And then I just keep sketching, uh, rinse and repeat for all the projects. Awesome. Awesome. So, so what are some of like your best resources that was the most helpful books, podcasts, whatever the case may be, like when you got started and helped okay. you out tremendously? Okay. So the, I have this one here. So it's called Profit First by Michael Mikulwinzitz. I don't Yeah. Yeah, I remember the day you told me about that book. I went to go get it. Yeah, dude, it's it's phenomenal. It's legit. Um, so whenever I left Focus Lab, uh, I told Eric Regan, who's one of the co-founders, and I've known Eric for a really long time. Rocky, what's up? Um, oh, Rocky. So I've known Eric for a really super long time. So literally, like, I told my boss, I was like, hey, I'm leaving. And then after that, he was like, okay, can I recommend some books? <laughs> and that's, like, just, that's just how Eric is, like... That's you know, awesome. you're going to deliver some hard news and then he's going to like follow that up in the next breath. Like, can I help you with that? You know? Um, and so that was the first book that he recommended me. And that, that book is very much, uh, about how to deal with your finances, um, mm -hmm. from, um, you've read it. So you understand, but it, it's very much like, okay, you bring in this much, it needs to be broke out in these different percentages and needs to flow in this different ways. Um, when you start making this much, the percentages change and whatnot. And what that has done is that where the other times where I've had a freelance business, I would go up and down because it's like, I have so much money and then I would spend the money and then it's like all the money would be gone. Right. Uh, this book has definitely helped me even those planes out. Mm -hmm. um, and so I haven't had any of those scares. Well, besides that one time where I only had $100 in savings, but, you know. $122. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so that book's been really helpful. Um, and then really another book that I read before all of that, um, was, is grit. And the other one is mindset, um, the psychology of the new success. And I think you and I have talked about this previously in some of the other podcasts that you and I have done together. Um, but those two things from a behavioral, behavioral psychology perspective, mm -hmm. just how your brain works, how your mind works, how thoughts can really control, you know, where you're headed. Those things have really helped me because I know that as a freelancer, you know, I, or even you know, like in a project, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to do what this client wants me to do, like just mm -hmm. period. Um, and so being able to go back to that going like, no, I know I can, and I know I will learn. And I know, um, I know I will fail and I know those fails will, will lead me into the right direction. Right. So those, those three books have been pivotal in changing my career and my about like direction, all of that. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. So why, why the name? Why did you come up with, was it thrice? Thrice. Why? Thrice. Where did that come from? What does, what's the, what's the whole story behind that? Okay. So the story behind thrice is, like I said previously, I want 
this studio to be a place of change for people, period. Um, my idea, my hopeful idea, and I, this might be really romantic, uh, is that I would take people who are underrepresented, underprivileged, um, life has dealt them some really hard things, or perhaps maybe they've made some really bad mistakes, um, and they can't get hired, or they can't get trained, or uh, something like that. So people that the society has written off, and specifically the creative world has written off, because in order to be a creative, it's definitely a privileged place. You know, um, there was a study that came out that pretty much <laughs> like show that like the more money your parents make, the, the more um, probability that you'll be an artist. Mm. And, uh, and it just kind of shows you that the creative world, the one that we live in, the one that we love to play in is, is a very privileged place. Um, and so I, I want Thrice to be a place that equalizes that as much as I can. So that's, that's what I want to do. I'm going to have apprenticeships. Um, I'm going to train people up. And it's, again, it could be absolutely romantic, but I think it's worth it. I cool. think it's worth trying. Cool. And where did the, where did you, what was the meaning behind the name? Ah, uh, so thrice is, is the whole like second or third, right? So thrice is like old English, like for three. Right. So it's like, I want, I want, I want to give people second and third tries. Like, oh, got like it. that's the got whole it. thing. Got yeah. it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Okay. I mean, there's a big, this is a pretty big mission behind a studio. Like it is, it is. And it's like, so our mission statement, I literally have it right here. It's like, we, we exist to help people become a better vision of themselves, a better version of themselves via creative work. So we're not here to create dope stuff. Like we are going to create dope stuff like that. That's, that's like that the is like, that's the given, right? Mm. Like that, that's, that's the quality standard, but what's more important because it's like I hear mission statements and the mission statements are always like we want to make the world better place for our clients and we we want to you know have a standard of excellence and you know all that stuff and I was like that that's really cool that's not me that's not my heart my heart is the people that I'm going to work with I want the I want the people to be changed forever for the for the best reasons and while we do that we're going to create dope stuff that's what's going to happen. Okay. I so. am digging it tremendously. Thanks. That is kind awesome. I'm nervous. We'll see if it happens. I can, I can literally talk about this forever because, yeah, since I just hired my first contractor, um, all of the things that have been going through my head, like I actually had to write it down so I was able to, like, communicate it, like, clearly with an, uh, another person. Uh, and it was just really cool to kind of write it down as like, this is our mission statement. These are our pillars and these are our values and our values are based upon our pillars and our pillars is based upon like everything is so interconnected and it's so who I am as a person. Um, and I, and I just love being able to, but the thing is, is that I'm working with people who've seen these before and their, their management never lived them out. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean so like yeah, I got you. so that's where I'm at where it's like it, as real as it is to me it's not real to them yet and mm -hmm. so I have to really work hard to make sure that it so, translates so my question is like what was that process like finding your contractor like was it someone you know from prior like what was that whole process like I go on uh what I call god whispers a lot um mm -hmm. often so this is a site. No, okay. no. God whispers is just kind of like what happens in my heart. <laughs> it's oh, like, go this way. God whispers dot com dot com. This is no. Oh, That's cool. man. we can probably make it in the site. And I don't know. But anyway, so but like whenever so whenever I feel like, hey, go this way. Um, I've got it now. Got I'm it. like, okay, there's no logical reason for me to think that like this is a way to go. Like it mm. doesn't, you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, we'll see what this happens. And so with this particular contractor, um, that, that is exactly what happened. And right. it's like every single time I have something where I'm like, okay, I really need somebody to fill this role. Um, like I pray about it and then a name pops up and then I reach out to that person and that person is like, 
like stoked. They're like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. And, da, da, da. and so, um, so really that's, that's what it has. That's, that's what it's been is just like, just following that inkling and mm-hmm. seeing where it's going to land. So no, I, I have no, I have no scientific, like, like you really threw me off. And he's like, <laughs> I was, I was like, oh. Is this like a site where you can find? Yeah, like no, there's there's no book, there's no exam questions, there's no there's no nothing. It's very much like go this direction, and it's like aye, aye and I'm going, and so far it's worked out. Now I know that that's probably not going to be the case for like, you know, it's not going to keep going like that. Um, so there are some books that I have read about like teams, like the ideal team p- player by Patrick Lencioni and, mm-hmm. um, like sticky teams by, I don't know who that guy wrote it, Osborne. Um, so I've like, I've learned, like I'm actively reading, right? Like if you're going to be a leader, like act, like actively learning is pretty important. Um, so yeah, so I've done that, but Generally speaking, I'm, I haven't done any interviews. I'm just more like tapped a person and been like, hey, have you ever okay. thought about this? Or I had lunch with somebody yeah. and uh, going in thinking, okay, I think at the end of this conversation, I'll probably ask her, um, but I see how the conversation goes. And then if I continue to have that feeling, then I, I hit her up. Okay. So, and another question in regards to that, is this... Now, this specific person, is this someone you you know prior to this? Like, I'm just very curious on, like, how it, because how it especially because this is like the early stages of getting someone on board is like probably like the most important. It's more support. Yes, you're right. So this particular person, I she was my best friend in high school. Um, so I've known her for, gosh, we graduated in 2000. So it's like 19 years now. Um but we haven't stayed connected at all. So we very much, you know, college happened and we split two different directions. And I think from there, like we maybe have had, like, we've had drinks and lunch together, like one each time, you know what I mean? Like since then. So I've seen you twice now, Mm -hmm. uh, in that past 20 years and a lot has transpired and a lot has happened. Um, but I know like what she has her degrees in and I've also seen some of the work. So she has a photography degree and she's going to be doing marketing here. So it's like, I've seen like some of those chops, um, in the past. So we'll see how it works out. Yeah. But I'm I mean, really excited. I, I, it, it's, it's all making sense now. Cause there's someone that you've known for a long time. Cause you know, just, I just feel Not like off makes, the street. Yeah. It, that, yeah, it that makes weird. sense. <laughs> to have like some kind of deep, even if it's not necessarily in the creative realm, some kind of deep connection prior to yeah. the hire. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see. Like I'm interviewing another person for a retoucher position mm-hmm. and I literally probably have only talked to her for like five minutes maybe previously. Um, but I have a really crazy gut feeling that like she's going to be a really good fit. Nice. Um, and so I'm also, I'm talking to her dad because this, this particular person is kind of young and her dad is like, I can't believe, uh, cause I approached him first going like, Hey, cause I know the dad a lot better. And I was like, Hey, do you think that your daughter would be interested in this? And he, he's like, were you listening to our conversation? Cause we literally were just talking about something like this last week. Wow. And, uh, and it's one of those things where it's like, man, I just, I just follow those whispers and I just hear things like that all the time. So I trust it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like both times that like I was told to leave a job, they had layoffs or they had like a tumultuous time shortly thereafter, After. Wow. you know? So it's like, it, it's just happened way too many times for me just to ignore it, you know? So it's like, no, okay, I'm going to follow this and see where this thread leads. And it's always, it's always someplace awesome. Nice. That is Scary. so that is so cool. Yeah. So cool. So <clears throat> any other advice you would have for anyone out there that um you know about this whole journey of just doing your own thing the mm-hmm. the um the, cuz you're living the real the real life of it you know what i mean you're not it's and not a pie it. in the sky dream like you know what are some of the things that are just not true 
what are some of the things that you know i mean like anything that you would like to share yeah i think there's two things i think one is that we often undercharge ourselves like because we look at our price tags and we're like could could i afford that and i'm like Mm -hmm. honestly i can't afford myself um and so i think that's the biggest thing is like just realizing like you know what like you you can't afford yourself and that's okay because they probably can you know what i mean um so one is make sure that you are charging what you're worth. And two is, well, how do you know what you're worth? Be in a community of people. I think that, um, and, and that is going to change and that's going to, that's going to change who that group is. So for instance, when I first started a year ago, I founded a mastermind uh, that was full of uh, lady commercial photographers and we were all solo entrepreneurs and we all did our own things and we learned a lot from each other. And then from there, I went to, another Slack and got into another mastermind. And this one was more about design and more business strategy, right? And so so then at that juncture, I weaned off from the first one, got really involved in the second one. And now I'm in this third one. And this third one is is heavy into illustration. Um, and so I have jumped from community to community depending upon what I need to learn. And so right now, because where I'm headed as a studio, because I have my first ongoing contractor, now I'm looking for a mastermind of women or men who own small agencies mm-hmm. and small studios. I want to be in, in that mastermind. Um, and so while I feel bad, you know, to my first one going, right. like, I'm still not in that group and I still love those girls, but I'm not learning what I need to learn here being honest about that and then just moving forward and trying to find the next one. Um, Because my time is so limited because I only work 30 hours a week. uh, And because I have three projects going on right now, if I'm going to spend any time, you know, on a a weekly meeting, it has to be one that benefits where I'm at in my current situation. Um, and, And it feels really selfish but I have to remind myself that whatever I'm learning is going to ultimately set the foundation for this strong and steady. And so it's going to impact my contractors, but it's also going to impact the people who come through these doors, you know, future. And that could be exponential. I mean, I could have 20 people working for me, you know, over the years, it could end up being like 50 or whatever, you know what I mean? Through time. Um, because I, I plan to die at the studio right now. Like that is the plan. So. I love it. So how are you, like, are you seeking these masterminds out? Yeah. So, I mean, um, I, so. They're I'm very all much so a, different. So how are you finding from one to the next? I am, I am. So two things, I either make it or I ask for it. Um, so the photography, one of the ladies, I, I knew of another lady who was in my scenario and I just said, Hey, do you know anybody else that matches our, you know, this criteria of being a lady, a solo entrepreneurial and a photographer. And she's like, absolutely. I was like, all right, you know, and, and specifically commercial photography. Mm -hmm. And she said, absolutely. So we're like, okay. And so we set up that criteria. And then at that point we had that mastermind. And then once, um, and then the other one, I just posted on Twitter going like, hey, I'm looking for a mastermind that is X, Y, and Z. And uh, I had someone reach out and was like, hey, that's us. And I'm like, I would love to join if you had me. And they're like, okay. Uh, And then this other one, because at that point, I've been talking about masterminds so much that people like recommend like, hey, there's this other one that's happening. And I'm like, oh, I would love to be to join that one. So the next one that I'm looking to join, no one has asked me about it. I know that they're out there. So I will probably end up just putting it on Twitter saying like, Hey, I want to be part of this or I want to make this anybody interested. Um, That's cool. Cause I'm again, like life is too short to sit around and wait for things to happen. You know, it's like, I reached out to Dan Petty, you know what I mean? I was like, Dan, I want to do a video about me, you know? So I did that. I reached out to dribble and I was like, Hey dribble, do you want a blog post? Like I could write one for you. And they're like, Yes, you know, and it's like I I reach out. I am being relentless. You don't wait. You don't wait. You know. I love it. That is so cool. That's what I'm talking about. So, um, are all these masterminds paid or free or free? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and there's been so many different variations of them. Uh, one has been where, you know, it's like, okay, we all are, there's a specific topic and we're going to talk about it. So one time we reviewed everybody's websites and critiqued it. And so that was really helpful. Uh, another time we each share like a problem that like, okay, we're struggling with this. Like this is something that we're trying to solve and everyone pitches in ideas. And this one was a very small, it was four people masterminds. So people, we could all do that, but I've heard of other masterminds that are long, like bigger that only like one person could really share. Um, and the other people give that feedback. Uh, other masterminds have been just like, hey, we're just going to have a Slack channel. So whenever we have questions or whatever, we're going to post in there. But we're also going to have a monthly just like hang out so we can like, you know, get to know each other and like, you know, chit chat. So that's been cool, too. And that's where we kind of set up like what were our what were our highs? What were our lows? What are we learning about? Or what are we aiming for? Gotcha. So that's been really cool. And one of the ones that have been. One of the ones that has been the most productive, it was actually a spinoff from one of the masterminds where we started a book club. Um, and so we just read a shared book and we go, we read a chapter a week or however, you know, whatever we set and then we talk about it. And so that's been really cool too. I, I could yeah. just rem- imagine like, like even a book like Profit First, like just going through that as a book club, that'd be cool. That is. Yeah. And just talking about it. And like, I think because the bigger things is that when we read when we read books like that, sometimes it's overwhelming because they're like, there's no way that I could do that in my scenario. That's true. And then other people are like, no, you actually can because I've already done it. Or have, did you think about it this way? Or mm-hmm. maybe you can just take that little bit snippet and apply that to your scenario. Like having other people like look at it from their angle mm-hmm. shows you a whole different side of the diamond that you didn't even know existed. I, and I think the the two latter points you made I think sometimes people don't even realize that. I think when they get these information, they feel like it's all or nothing. Like if they don't do exactly what it says, how it's done, oh, they can't do it at all. But you actually can tailor it to your life. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that is that is so cool. And I love the idea yeah. of you like, I mean, it's. I know you're not trying to be selfish, but it's like, okay, this is not feeding what I need to be fed right now. So I'm jumping to the next one. And just yeah. keep going to where this group is feeding wherever you are in whatever season. Can you talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that? Because I feel like sometimes, especially when you've built great bonds, um, it's hard for people to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. It really is. Uh, just because you, you end up loving them. Um, I would say that there is... I do throw caution in there in that you want to give the mastermind enough time, right? Like Mm -hmm. six months of meeting just to make sure that like, okay, maybe it's not a lull, like maybe like personalities don't click, like whatever it is. It's like, Mm -hmm. you know, really invest and give some time to it to make sure that it, that it does. Um, But I have found like in, in both masterminds that I have left, they both have been very appreciative of the time that I've been there, you know? Um, And I think maybe doing it too, like saying like, okay, hey guys, like I've learned a lot. I'm very thankful. I really appreciate these things that I've learned here. Uh, I think it's time for me to, to move on because it's it's time for me to move on. I don't even, I don't have, you haven't explained why, you know, you don't have to defend your reason for leaving. Right. Um, But I think what it does too, is it opens up the conversation for the people who are remaining going like, should we still be doing this too? Um, Because I think oftentimes a lot of people will stay in the group because of the bonds. And so if you leave, it it kind of helps them to like reevaluate, like, okay, is this still beneficial for me too? Um, So, cause I know after I left that mastermind, that, that first one, it it all disbanded. Mm. Um, So I was like, okay. Okay, cool. So, Makes yeah. sense. I'm really intrigued about the mastermind and just, especially the whole idea of just getting yourself around people that could feed whatever, wherever you are in that particular season. Yeah, and yeah, turn, exactly. Feed them. So it, yeah, it, it's a very, it's a good, it's a good thing. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to keep you much longer. 
because I, I don't want you to fall asleep on me. We, <laughs> we're, we're cutting into your bedtime. Yeah, I, um, I had some energy <laughs> drink. I'm good. But um, any last words, any um, last things that you would like to share as you've you know, been on this journey for almost a year in running your own studio? I guess expect, just save, <laughs> save a lot of money and, and expect the, um, ex- expect the, the waves, um, and continue to share like what you're working on JT. Um, it's not about, uh, it's not about perfection. It's about consistency. You know, okay. it's like, sometimes I'll look at things and be like, oh, I don't really want to share that or like whatever. Um, and I'll see that engagement is not there or whatever. And it's like, you know, it's not about perfection. It's about consistency. Just reminding people like here, I'm here, still here, still making stuff. Still want to take your money. Cool. (laughs) You know? (laughs) And I really like the, um, the time-lapse video with the machine that you got that moves the camera. Dude, I love it too. So like my first hire. uh, Yeah. So Katie, the the contractor that's um, with me now, I'm super stoked that she's here, but she's our, the marketing director. And so when she came here, I was like, you know, we can, we can write your job description of where you are right now, or we can write your job description of where you'll be in two years. Um, And she's like, well, let's do it for where I'll be in two years. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, And so anyway, so that's a side, a side thing. So, but so she, I showed her the little camera thing and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, because that's what she's going to be doing. Like that her whole, her whole thing is to create content for us to share, um, is to continue to get the words out because what's happening when what I've noticed happened with other agencies that I've worked at, that I've since left and I've seen what, what they're going through or, um, or even in my own business, what happens is that we get, we, we have no jobs. Right. And then we start marketing, we make clatter, then we get jobs and we get really busy and we can't, and then we stop marketing. And then once we get back, there's like, there's, there's nothing. It's, there's there's nothing, there's no projects. Um, and so when focus lab was really, really, really young and I started there, I was their sole, my husband called me their propagandaist. Like you're like, all you do is create focus lab propaganda. And I'm like, Yes, I do. And I'm doing a good job of it. Uh, and like, that's all I did. And, and so it's like, if the designers were too busy, not being able to like show work, like they always at least had over their shoulder pictures of their work because I, I, I created that for them, you know, or it's like, I saw something that they did. And so then I riffed off of that, you know, and made something else. Um, but still always had something to share and always had something to amplify their voice. Um, and so I saw the success in that. I saw the, the waves of business for me and realized that like the first thing that I needed to hire first person is someone to handle my marketing, you know, so I can just keep focusing on, on creating, you know, those client relationships and creating rad projects. So that is cool. That is cool. Cause usually oh, the first hire is someone to help you out with work. That's yeah. usually the first hire. No, see, I can get subcontractors for that every once right. in a while, right? So it's like, right. I'm talking to Zach right now about some motion animation and, you right. know, we're talking to a retoucher and I have someone who builds sets for me, um, you know, like, like actual sets. Cause we're paper is really cool and I really love paper, but we're moving into like more still life scenes and like mm-hmm. big sets. And so it's like, I have to have someone who can, who knows how to work saws. Cause I don't, you know, so it's like, I have hiring somebody that does that now and, um, so I can, and these people I can bring in per project, but it's like, but that ongoing, like all, I always need marketing. Like, you know, the players on the team might change, but marketing is always there. And so she is, she's the first like ongoing contractor. That is awesome. I'm well, loving thanks. it. I'm loving Aww. it. That is like, it's like a. I, I see it already. Go ahead. Go ahead. Girl. You're too kind. I, <laughs> you're too kind. So. Well, Alicia, um, where can people go to find you other from right here on Instagram at Thrice Studio? Where can people go to find you and learn more about you? Yeah. So if they want to follow me at Alicia Cologne on um, the Twitter. Now, I'm also Thrice Studio as well on Twitter, but I'm definitely way more active on my personal account. But Katie is going to change all of that. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, because you kind of had me like a little confused when I was trying to get ready to like promote this. I was like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So anyway, uh, but if you want hot takes on whatever is on top of mind right now, um, that's my personal Twitter is where I go. But I still promote a lot of my work and, and all of that stuff. But upcoming um, appearances and upcoming workshops that I'm really excited about. Uh, we will both be speaking at Design Revival in Columbus uh, yeah, in for September. Sure. Looking forward to it. Yep. So we're super stoked on that. And then also in October, I'll be uh, hosting a paper workshop at Creative Works, and then skedaddling over to Epicurrence after that, and to be chilling out with those peeps as well. So nice. I hope I get to see all y'all out and about. Nice, nice. Well, Alicia, this has been awesome. Thank you for just Likewise. doing this. Thank you for sharing. Same. Thanks for just, having uh, me. Just dude. keep up the good work. I mean, super I think for your encouragement. It, it's it, it's crazy how much encouragement and just support, like verbal, like support, just means so much. So thank you so much. For that. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. I hope it's been super valuable to you. And you're now ready to take your audience building, your community growing to the next level to help you and help me build our empire, for lack of a better word, or just to build our thing. Um, Remember to stop by iTunes, Passion Behind the Art, and leave a review and subscribe. It's very important to me. It helps the podcast grow. And it makes me feel good to kind of hear from you guys to know what you like about this podcast, what it's done for you. So jump on iTunes and subscribe and leave a review. Passion behind the art. Be blessed.